you have a preference between studio work and performing? Performing. Yes. I mean, so it's all great. Yeah. It's all it's all great. Um, the creative process of being people and sharing that energy as you do. But after you learn the songs, it becomes energy. So it's just how you interpret that song, how much you get into it, and the the, the conversation or the the um, between the drummer and the bass and the guitar. I love that. I love the magic. It's like us in a room. We're talking to each other, and you get a vibe. Field and it's either warm, fuzzy, or it's shit, you want to go home. Right? <laughs> but it's like, that, fuzzy. it's like that in the studio, too. So when you get that with people that you're um, working with, that's the magic of the studio. So that's great. But the energy on stage is a whole other thing because that's when you, you practice. You know the songs now. We've practiced, we rehearsed. Now the magic happens. Because when you get on stage sometimes, you don't remember people saying, Dion, man, you did this, you did that. I go, really? I don't remember a damn thing. <laughs> I remember them calling me, right? And then something seems to take over, and I'm free, and I don't have to worry about it. So I'm smiling and jumping around because I already practiced. I know the parts, <laughs> you know, and I'm not, so hopefully, you know, you don't hit it on notice something. But the magic happens, and that's the joy of um, the music to me. That, that, that plane and you know and also you know you you, you have to give um, you know you have to give glory and due to a higher power. I'm not saying you know you know you're to, to God is when you you feel the difference between yourself and a, and a, and the spirit coming in sort of when you do these things. It um it happens and that's the magic. Um, you know and you can sort of look back at the tapes, look back at the videos. You go, oh yeah. You know, it's like um, one, two, three. You know, you, I've seen the video. I was there. <laughs> okay, but when you see different things, you look back and you go, "Wow, did that really happen?" You know, um, um, it's it's just amazing. So, oh, that answers the question. Anything else? Um, I have a bunch of things. Thousands, but I know. How, how was the final? <laughs> the final Wembley. That was, um, sad. that was sad. Well, it must have been amazing. But it was at the same time. It was. It was good. That was a good show. That was a good show. Probably the longest one. I can see um, Andrew in that checkered outfit now. Yeah. No, that was a good show. Um, it was. It, it was. It was a great show. It really was a great show, you know, um, and emotional, I think, for George, for both of them, you know, for us too, but I think more because that was the, the split between um, going to the next phase, so, yeah. I remember, as I say, um, Faith Tour. What about it? You were the opening artist. Was I? Yeah. yeah. No. It wasn't that. It wasn't going to look like no, it. That was Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> that was Eddie Murphy. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> so I wanted to know how, how do you, because that is a long show. Where do you find the, um, the, the physical stamina, yeah, and the ability to. Frisbee. I know Frisbee. <laughs> That's the key. Frisbee <laughs> <laughs> is the key. That was, was that tough to do that? No. It was fun. That was fun. You know? Yeah. Now, what else? I'm trying to think of some stories. Um, that are appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody ever get hurt playing Frisbee? Because I think it's a lot. No, 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 not really. Not really. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. What that? No, I'm trying to think of stuff. Wham, well, final. Because we used to do pranks, you know, we used to do all kinds of pranks, you know. I remember the last, the last, when the show, when you got to the end of the tour, that's when any, anything goes with anybody. And all the people had been working with you for the last 13 months on the road, 
they can do anything to you because you can't do shit about it. And it's a lesson. And everybody got paid up it. So now, you have to worry. I remember, I remember singing, I mean, uh, you know, dancing around. Something hit my legs. Ow, what is that? And the lighting guys have pea shoots. Oh. And they're up there. And they're up there. Uh, we, we take the, um, I think it was, it was Dave Clay, one of the keyboard players. He was talking to us, this is terrible. He was talking to us backstage or something. And we taped him up. I think it was in China. We taped him once. We taped him up, full of gaffer tape. His all to his knees, his feet, his arms, and kicked him on stage. So he could only. <laughs> <laughs> so those were some fun moments. Um, what else? Um, No, I say this uh, some. George didn't like touring that much. He did it first. At first it was fun. It was fun, but um, as he got older, he's a cancer like me, he wanted to be. Um, but I liked her. I never wanted to come back. He said, can we just stay out here forever? And just keep going from city to city, from country to country. Because when you meet so many people and they love you, it's night, and plus you, the more you travel, the more you learn. So I think, um, but I think he was sort of like, homesick, and, you know, wanted to be with his friends, because they say the road is lonely. You know, um, I don't think the record company was ready for it. I don't <coughs> think they were ready for their success. I think it stopped them, that it happened so fast. And of course, they left that situation. To another one, so. And you were very young when you left home to pursue this career. What I was born you? a poor white child. <laughs> <laughs> How did your parents feel about you leaving and going to pursue this wow? Oh, my parents. My parents? Yes. Oh, course. my parents were great. They um, they um, always supported me in what I did from an early, early age. I got married really young, really young. And because um, I wanted to um, have the kind of love that my parents had. So they always supported me. My mother had one request, and it's hysterical. She said, Dion, don't you come back home with no earring in your ear. <laughs> it took me totally by surprise. Totally by surprise. That's the first thing she said to me, and that was it. She loved George. She met George. Um, they hung out. Um, we had fun. It was, it was great. So they always supported me. I knew from the age of seven what I wanted to do. And I had no problem expressing it to them. I told them, I want to be a pop star, nothing else. But they were in um, education and said, don't want to be a teacher, don't want to be a policeman, don't want to be a farmer, man. I want to do music. So they supported that. And I'm lucky, I guess, I was the only child. Because they told me if I had um, brothers and sisters, I wouldn't have so many instruments. Did you ever want brothers and sisters? Always. I used to look for them in the attic. <laughs> we had this big house, right? It's massive, right? And I used to go, it's got to be more people in this house. <laughs> you know, you got these toys and bikes and piano and saxophone and drum and this and that. And I'm like, wow, there's got to be um, other people in the house. So I used to look, really, I really did. I used to look in the attic for brothers and sisters, but I used to constantly tell them to get busy. <laughs> What's up with this? You know, I said, come on, I want, some, I want brothers and sisters, and they tried. And nothing was wrong with either one of them. It just didn't happen. It never happened. So that's it. Um, I have a question from, um, from Diane about, about going back to George's songwriting when he wrote a song. Was it definitely, when you say, connected to specific parts of his life or things that were happening, or were songs just? No, I think everything he wrote happens a part of his life and a part of um, things he saw in the world, things he would see. You know, um, um, <laughs> later in life, like our mother's pride, those songs are really <laughs> sad songs, but beautiful, beautiful place, beautiful words um, that just would, you know, make you cry, basically, when you think about it. I said I wasn't going to cry, but you know, I'm not going to listen. 
I'm shedding tears. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think um, when life affected him, uh, as he's going through the changes, you know, and let's face it, I mean, the other part of uh, the changes he went through in his life and, you know, coming out and all these things that um, I knew early. So all those things that happened before, happened after that, you know, the build up, uh, you know, his parents. And, you know, anyway, I'm going to forget. Sorry. Right. Okay. What else? I didn't do it. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, yeah. um, what are you working on currently? Projects that you have coming up, or that you've been doing, what have you been doing? I have been um, right now a few great things. Um, I've been working on a system with my partner to bring back the music business. The uh, 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 system that gives all the artists eighty percent of their royalty, and um, that they can actually live in the make money from the music business because they're still. You'll hear about it soon. It's coming very quickly, but um, and even in depth, it allows me to go back and get George's songs, Prince's songs, people's songs that make them 700% more money than what they did when they were alive. So for the families, it's a great thing. And for the youth, it's a fantastic thing because we have to find a way to keep the music business going and let the artists get paid. All the young artists, they really have nothing to look forward to. They want to be on the radio, but they don't understand that you still won't make any money. And so, and now, the big groups, you notice that all the acts you see, or go to see now, they tour them all together. So you get three or four acts at the same time. That's because it's hard to sell tickets, because it's not like it used to be. So people don't spend as much money. As, um, and everybody's greedy on the other end. So this is a system that will help that. So I'm working on new songs. I have lots of songs that I've had for years and I've waited um, for the right moment. So um, I'm sort of waiting for this new system we're working on to come out before I put out a new record. Because I like to get paid right. more than um, a fifth of a penny. Yeah. Um, and so put it right. Um, we had a funny, a funny moment um, that the rhythm section was, um, you know, the cats in the rhythm section. When we played um, Go Go and Wake Me Up, I mean, Wake Me Up and um, the Trailless Whispers, it was so magical that it only happened in like three or four takes. It was very, very interesting. You know, we rehearsed it and do it, and uh, it became, um, you know, like pretty easy playing with those guys. So um, it was a lot of fun doing that. We had another moment in France where we changed. Oh, did you hear about this one? Let's see. The um, um, Careless Whispers to a so to a sort of honky tonk song. And it went, and then the dawn, the ding, 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 the dawn, the ding, the dawn, the ding, the ding. It's out there somewhere. No, it's really fun. We haven't found that one. It was really fun. Yeah, search for it now. And um, well, I have endless stories. But I mean, if you guys want to ask questions or, you know, ask me some things, well, I can just keep talking. But if you got some questions that you'd like to know about, um, she has some questions, you know. David. Well, we do have some questions, Dion, but unfortunately, I don't. Oh, okay, some people put the, and I'm old and I don't have my reading glasses. So, no, no. Um, we're going to let Maggie read them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This way, you can shoot her dirty looks if you don't want to answer them. No, that's not fair. <laughs> it might be fun to see how many I can actually answer. <laughs> okay, like this one, I don't think I can. Who are the four girls in the Go-Go video? There's, we don't Do you remember who there's, there's the are? fourth one that we can't remember. That's Pepsi, Shirley, Janet, and Jamie. Yeah. Yeah. Who were Janet and Jamie? Janet and Janie, Janet and Janie, I'm telling you, is it? Janet was a background singer okay. who was with us, um, who ended up marrying Steve Sitwell, the trumpet player. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, Janie was, uh, um, she had a record out of her, right? And she was, um, she was a good singer. 
And now she has a radio show in London. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Now we know the mystery right. has been solved. It wasn't. <laughs> that was the early days. Before before Shirley. The before Shirley Lewis. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This came later. Right. Um, this is from Dasha. Dosha. 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 Uh, what was George's favorite key for to write in, and why? Two, well, that's the three part, but what was the favorite part of the key? His favorite chord? Key. Key. Yeah. His favorite key. Okay. Um, I don't know if you could say his favorite key. A lot of them are in the same key. Some of them, um, you know, um, I would say between D, A, um, but, but you, it's hard to say. He never said it's my favorite. He just said, yeah. yeah, this is my favorite kid. <laughs> what is going on, this kid? <laughs> I just thought maybe you might have seen a pattern in the writing. Like, okay, he let he typically. No, I, well, I saw I saw many patterns, many patterns. Um, with us writing stuff together, you know, um, and just the songs and the patterns that way, but not keys. Some of the keys were sort of all over the place, you know, like um. With the faith is with faith is C or F, I can't remember now, but it's something like that. Um, he would go there and, um, you know, just any key, I guess. I don't see a faith. Um, I don't know who this is from, but the question is on the Spell is actually about my daughter. I delivered my daughter by myself, and when I was young, very young, and, um, so when I pulled her out of the womb, that's what came to me. It's like a spell. You know? It's a love song too, but really, personally, it's about you know birth. You know, so that's all that one. It's a beautiful song. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can you provide a little bit of background on the writing of last? What kind of background? It was Christmas, for God's sake. What do you need? It's Christmas. It's a Christmas song. <laughs> um, that's one of my favorites, too. Um, I didn't write that, so I, I, I imagine that. Um, it was, um, it's one of the best, by the way. To me, it's one of the best Christmas yeah. songs. Oh, yeah. It's right up there with the best of the best. Yeah. So it's a great standard Christmas song. And I think he was, um, he went to do a Christmas song. And he did well, so, um, you know, I was proud of him for that. And then, uh, that year, the first time it came out, we all had a great Christmas. It was great. <laughs> to hear it, you know, when you hear that, um, and I hear it everywhere I go, so um, did, did you have any, as a band, pre-show rehearsals or anything I mean, sure, everyone had to play. <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, we, we prayed some, you know. Um, it's a lot of unity. But for me, personally, and the lighting guys and the tech guys and the pan, we played frisbee. What does that mean? How's that being repeated? Where do you play frisbee? Like, in the stadium. Um, <laughs> in the stadium, backstage, um, dressing room. Hallway walking to the stage. Right? <laughs> we play. I would play half the time. You know, I just love frisbee. Um, and George played with me half the time. You know, he played. He didn't always play because we don't want to get hurt. But um, <laughs> but everybody else played. The sound guys, who um, the lighting guys, um, it's a lot of fun. And still, even um, even last year, when I went um, to London to do the Broad thing. Everybody played frisbee. The whole, you know, it was just great. Great time. So you keep that tradition alive. Yes. And, and she is a very good frisbee player. <laughs> she has to put up with my nonsense. <laughs> Maggie, go on. She's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you had to choose one, a track from Fantastic Beasts, what would it be? It's impossible to answer. Um, I love Paul. I love Paul. Um, um, I like blue. Oh, I love blue. Oh, we love blue. A lot of people don't know about blue. I, oh, wow. um, I do. 
Um, we all know Blue. I like that one. I like um, I like the Isley Brothers. Um, the cover we did for that. That was great. Um, but all of them. You know, I really don't have, I mean, as a musician and an artist, I really don't have a bad, any, any gray areas about the music. I like the B sides, I like the A sides. I, I, I just enjoyed them because they were different, different parts of um, different feelings, and different, you know, um, the way he expressed his vocals on certain things. They, they, were, they were great, but it was just different. So I enjoyed that versatility of, you know, for, you know, to see one song vary from the other. Of course, the patterns of his voice are still the same because it's him singing. But some of the, some of the, um, you know, some of the, like, blue, blue and, um, and something else. Did you know Elton John was on the edge of heaven? No. That's Elton John playing keyboard. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So you know, just oh, I said George is on their lips. Always, 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 always. Don't forget that. Um, we recorded that, and um, um, Elton was in the studio, and he had this watch that it was stupid. I don't know to do it, but um. He said, yeah, Dion, hold this now, okay. <laughs> 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 you know, it's so crazy. But well, I remember that. But yeah, um, now what, what were we talking about? Blue or something else? Favorite song from Chapman. Yeah, I don't have a favorite. I like them all. Sorry. All right, that's good. Um, was there a point in time when you uh, collectively, as a collective, as a band, say, those wham, realized that you were going to tour or you had about to make it big? When did, you, when did you realize you guys were going to be a thing? Oh, it happened very quickly. Extremely quickly. So fast that no one really, I mean, um, now, in those days, what was it, Innovision Records? Is that the name of the record? Yes. 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 <laughs> that's going back. So Innovision, um, um, so the company then, um, it happened very fast. I think I realized, um, I realized it. Um, I think George and Andrew were quite shocked and excited about it. You know, um, I mean, George is, George is quite cheap. He's quite, she was always quite sure of himself, you know. <laughs> um, not over um, ego, but you know, he was, he was confident, you know. And um, so he was, um, he was quite happy about it. Okay. Well, that one's gone. Always the, the the combination of the two that, that um, makes it stronger for me. So as time went on, George began to play, and learn bass. Of course, I, that's why we were always playing together. So um, I, th I think I think towards the end he became he's um, a good musician. You know, I mean his skill was um it's, it's, I mean his best skill to me was he wrote incredible songs. He was a great singer. You know, he was a boss. Right. And a good performer. And that was his um to me. Um 
I didn't do it. <laughs> 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 um, you did do this. Uh oh. So you played with so many other performers as well. With whom would you like a chance to play moving forward? Um, what? 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 <laughs> no, no, who would you like to play with? Everybody. Uh, everybody. Everybody. Not everybody. Okay. Oh, and that's happening too. Um, I'm actually. I'm actually um, playing with a group called Switch now. I don't know if you guys know who that is. It's a group from the 70s. They had a bunch of hit songs on El Tabar's Brother the Brothers. Oh, well, I'm playing with some of those guys now. Um, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I just did a couple of shows in Milwaukee um, last month, actually. So, yeah. Okay. Since we're at um, fun nights, we're going to I think you'd be very happy about that. Um, music in the schools um, and education in music, which um, they seem to have taken out a lot of schools right now, which is crazy. Right. So it's a good thing that um, this exists. And, um, like I said, we need to do more things to help the youth for music education because really music helps people in all sorts of ways, ways we can't describe yet. So um, it's, I think it's a good thing. I think Schwartz would be proud of you guys. So, uh, you know, hey. good work. Yeah. Um, how did it feel to sing one, two, three with George? That was fun. <laughs> yeah. That was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> fun. Yeah. That was fun. We actually have the video. We do. We have the video. Here today. Yeah. Wow. Oh, we're going to show it. Hey. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I have two. <laughs> how many, um, how, how many Don't songs? cry, man. I know. She <laughs> doesn't know how to ask it. No, I know. It's no, it's no. Um, we know about Hop and Help Me. I'm curious about the uh, collaboration that made that happen. Were there other songs on Spell that he worked on with you? No, I, I did Spell. Um, when I did, I did spell twice. The first time I did spell was before I left to go to Europe on um, record with Harvey Mason, um, called Most Valuable Player, because I played with Harvey Mason. Um, I don't know if you know who that is. He has a crew called um, Foreplay, with Nathan East playing bass. And um, anyway, that was before, and I did it again, so spell, like I said, I wrote Spell, but my daughter was born. At that exact moment, it came. And that's how that song came about. I don't even know if George was born yet. I don't think, I don't think he was alive. I don't think he was alive. <laughs> but, um, so did I answer the question? Yes, did he sing on any of the other songs? On the no. Oh, you no. No. Sorry. no. Well, he did not. Do we know, of course, about the, um, if you were there? Novel, Eyes of Brothers cover. Right. Were there other songs that you would have liked to have worked on covers? Mm -hmm. We were going to do, and the people, another thing, people, same <laughs> old shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, what's the beat? <laughs> um, any, um, which would, would have been amazing because I was with Marvin Gaye. George had this thing from Hotel, as you know. Yeah. Okay, so I knew Aretha and um, Michael and all of them. Um, so that got together. But before Marvin died, when she died on Waking Up Day in Coco, my plan was to have me, Marvin, and George do it right. Oh, wow. But Marvin died. Wow. That's what happened with that. So we were, I was trying to organize that because um, he loved him all the time. Breathy tone in George's voice. That specifically is John like a I think blue is here in blue, like a baby, and all through the recordings. Was that natural? Did he just sound like that naturally? Or was there any effects put on that into the recordings? I don't know. Let me try to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, How do you think that's so so? Well, remember, now, remember, you're talking about the 
80s. Okay, the 80s, all music in the 80s had that reverb. Remember? They don't have that now. It's totally digital, it's totally different now. But we all had those effects and uh, all our voices. And, but yeah, he, had a, he has an area for us. Anyway, so. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, the last high note, Bogley, was that you? Or is it George Roar? Did you sing vocals? Did you vocals on that song? I think I did, but I can't remember. I think I left it on the train. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's wow, that's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, what would George think if you imagined about all the love his lovelies have shown each other and him? Did he realize how much he impacted our lives through his music? I think he did. I think so. But then, you know, I can't really answer that because I'm not him. But, uh, you know, um, he knew he was loved. You know, he knew he was loved. You see, it was a long time, Mom. My stretch with George was very long. The, the latter part of his life, to me, that short was, I mean, that stretch was short. You know, for me, um, being there, I guess, when was it, was it 16 or 17? I don't know, I can't remember. But a long time, right? And then you have this, this, um, this enormous growth, like the difference between um, Lamb and George Michael. You know, the difference, that, that, that period of, I think, Countess Whispers was the, was the, the start of him becoming into his own, you know, and so, um, which is a fantastic thing. And I, um, you know, and then after that growth, you know, the Faith Tour and, you know, um, some of those songs really were, um, I don't know if I'm answering the question, I'm just going off in my own world. But, um, <laughs> Do you what was the question? Do you not share a Do you feel that? Yes. Yeah, 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 I feel that. You do. Yeah. Okay. And George, George always um, made me feel loved. You know, we were like brothers, so. What's that? Tissue? Tissue. Yeah. I, I don't want to use it because it sticks in my face. I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's too black. You sure? Who are you black, dude? <laughs> Um, what did I say? Oh, what did you say? That you feel oh, yeah. love. Um, yeah, I do feel love. Yeah. Yes, yes. This is quite amazing. Thank you guys for that. Um, what else? Um, what of the videos, which one was your favorite to be a part of the make? I just don't know why I had to wear those damn shorts. <laughs> 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 to this day, to this day, wherever I go, I tell you, they don't come up with all the other pictures. People have the oddest pictures. And, they, and then um, we're at Whitley Bay ice cream with Lamb years ago, and it's freezing in the wintertime. And I'm backstage talking shit. I am not wearing those shorts. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm in the shorts. <laughs> Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. What, it was fun. what was it like to play at the marquee when you guys did um, the Edge of Heaven? That's one of my I'm favorites. your man. Yeah. Love, that is funny. Love the That's videos. hysterical. Danny was so funny. Um, Danny Cummings in the beginning, outside the venue, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the guy with the Kungas. Uh, yeah. Straight did great video. That was fantastic. Those are funny. That was fun. Yeah. 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 It looked like you guys were having fun. We were. Yeah. We were. And the audience, the, um, the audience was having fun. Oh, sure. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah. More? Yeah. What, what Wait a minute. The Eagles just scored. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the inspiration behind the Mary Tyler Moore Um, That was, me and George were really, really, um, really together on that one. I guess it's, uh, you know, um, when you, when you love somebody and you try to try again, you know? It's a sad song, really. I mean, it's one of my favorites, but it's kind of sad when you listen to it. You know, um, but you know, um, I'll, you know, in the second version, there's hope. <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, that's, that's what inspired us to do that, you know? And I think, 
for my, I think from everybody, for everybody else that's looking for love and George going through the changes he was going through and you know, not knowing if, you, you know, when you, the hard part is when you, you're in a relationship and you're there for a long time, but then you go elsewhere and you break up and to talk to, it's like dating again. When you're 50 mm -hmm. years old and you're not used to dating. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and you've been married for 40 years. So, you know, so, you know, so, so it came along. There was a few versions that were recorded, you know, everything you know. <laughs> Do you have a favorite version of Blue? I just like the song. I just like the, again, he wrote great songs. Even as a, even as a kid, those songs were um, very, very interesting songs. Very, very, um, very musical. I'm curious if, um, when the George and Andrew wrote Girls Whisper when they were 16, why it didn't make it on a fantastic? <coughs> Who knows? Who knows the answer to that? It was a time, it went because it didn't fit. Fantastic, it didn't fit the man. It's an older, more mature song, okay? And I think that was the breaking point for George to go on his own. I went on my own, and Andrew did whatever. He Andrew went on his own too. I also played on that album too. Um, Andrew solo album. Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, it was just that time for everybody to um, be free, and um, it, it came out good. So. Frazier, um, one of the famous black um, doctors um, here. So I used to come to Detroit and uh, sing here a lot. Did you do that more than once? Oh, yeah. From what age to what age? Um, I think from um, sort of from um, 14, maybe 14 to I don't know, maybe 14, 14, 14, 15, 16, 17, somewhere in there. Did you stay with like a host family? Mm -hmm. What do you mean, host family? Well, when you came. <laughs> Mommy! You were young. <laughs> <laughs> you were young. They didn't put you up in the hotel by yourself, did they? I've been performing all my life. Oh, wow. My, my, um, no, I had, of course. You know, my father was a teacher and um, a principal and, um, they were very strict about me right. playing all around, but they always had people to look after me. Okay. So. Um, do you, do you, do you ever get used to the feeling of, or had, get, of being on stage and having all of the crowd energy, like all of this magnified that we do, um, coming at you? Because that's a lot, so if you watch the video. Yeah, it's, it's natural, live. it's natural. I, I like people, I love people. I like, I'm, I'm a people person, and then sometimes, I want to see people go. It's like, it's like music. I love music, but the thing um, I remember um, in the early days when I was married, um, you know, my wife used to put it on the radio. I go, turn that shit off. She said, why is music? I said, because I'm creating. Because I'm always hearing music constantly wherever I go. Even now, as I'm talking, I hear stuff in my head. You know, and you know, the key is to remember it. You know, I can't say, wait a minute, get out of the corner. Excuse me, guys. But um. You know, I um, I get used to it. It's nice. It's nice to talk to people. I, I remember being 16-ish and seeing you guys live in Hollywood Park, Hollywood Park. Right. And a little incident. You probably have no clue, but girlfriends and running after the limousine. Do you have any stories, or is there? Do you have, what was this most frightening situation that you found yourself in in that, or that were the best? Because I know that that can be touchy. Uh, we, we were grabbing with that celebrity. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it was kind of crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. We had some crazy times. But Hollywood Park was a great gig. It was a great gig. That was the Pointer one. Sisters, Shaka Khan, you know, man, that was a great. And that was a, well, the first, that wasn't the first time. That was the second time. Because the uh, first time Wham played, the very first time, 
the Du Bois hit them, they hit America, right? In California was um, to see their faces, to see George and Andrew's faces um, on American soil. Well, for me, I've been gone for years. I had been back. I never came back home, only to do shows. So um, that gig at Hollywood Park was a great gig, a lot of fun. And I remember, it's another story. We go to Texas for the first time. Yeah. We play in Texas. Dallas. Yeah. And we get in the elevator to the hotel, right? And we're standing in the bed. All of a sudden, this big tall guy comes in. And it's JR from no, Dallas. No, no, no. And they go, boys, welcome to Texas. <laughs> George, like they look, they look at that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else? The Eagles just scored. Yeah. It was fun though. That, that, it's all crazy. It's part of the I mean, play. you know, when you when you're young, you kid. I mean, it's still kids, really. When you're young, you're having so much fun. You should have um, fun. You know, um, I've always been it was fun. As long as it's good and clean. But you know, you. Um, when you're a kid, you think a different way, especially when you're on top, you know, you're just that crazy. And you should, you should have a good time. Ain't that crazy? Because it doesn't last forever. You know, so, you should have fun. I have a question. You don't have to answer it if you don't want to. Dear, that kind of question? We, we all know, no, 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 no. We oh. all know George was a very generous person. What? What was your favorite, your favorite gift that George gave to you? To have one? Well, of course, just a gift of working with him, knowing him. Right together. That's the best. What better gift could there be? What could he give him? Yeah. It goes both ways, you know? Yeah. You know? It was like Christmas coming around. Many Christmases. And I go, what the hell am I with the George? It's uh, like, you know, you know, you know, you if you ever if you ever go shopping for the help, you know that. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Well when you get somebody who's got everything anyway. You know, so best gift is um, what we had, what we shared, what we gave to one another, and look, we got the music and the videos to prove it. And we, we left that, so that's better. Yeah, the best gift. Anybody else? If not, we're going to be on a break. Do you ever, do you ever get to see Andrew? Yeah, I saw Andrew um, when I went back to London, but when I go back again, I'm, um, I want to get a chance to see his dad, Jack. Oh. It's Jack, his son. He always, um, from day one, he always said, Oh, Dion, this is my other son. This is my black son. You know, so he was always, you know, and uh, it's cool. I need to go and see him. So. How is Andrew doing? Andrew, see, I mean, you know, I didn't really get a chance to talk to him. You know, when you're around people, it's hard to really find out what's happening. Sure. But um, yeah. I'm sure I will. You know? He looked good, though. I saw him at the awards, and, you know, he looked okay. and. You know, I talked to, um, I saw um, Shirley, I'm not crying, Lisa. I don't feel like crying, it's just kind of, anyway, um, with, um, what's the group? Gross. Family Bell. Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I saw her, um, was it Jimmy Kimmel? Yeah, Jimmy Kimmel. The first time. Yeah, Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel show. And we hadn't seen each other oh, for a long time. Wow. And um, she used to talk to me about her. Um, about her husband Martin. before when we were young. Uh -huh. right. 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 He's, yeah. he's aging well. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's good. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's good. Fabulous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, but they're all doing well. Oh. You know? Yeah. They're a beautiful couple. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They've been together for a long time. Yeah. You know? Thanks I wasn't too sure about it Thanks. when we were young. And she always said that. You said me and my husband that he was gonna say, hey, he changed, and things happen. <laughs> <laughs> More questions? We're done. Okay. Who is Blue Britney for? I can take that. No. No. Um, I think. Um, I I don't know. I don't know. That was one of his personal songs at the time. I love the song, but you know, all songs are, have a meaning, so I never really asked him, you know, about who it was for. 
her what was it about. And he had many songs that he wrote that were specifically about people or situations. Now, Dion, that there's all this music that was, was never released. Do you think that it's true. It's true. Oh, it's true. Oh, sure. Well, I hope, I mean, to me personally, some things should be left alone. Okay? Um, it's great to share those things with the rest of the world if it's done right. But if, if it's done, Wrong way. Well, there's just no right or wrong. It's just to me, as an artist and a producer, if it represents what George was like. Right. You know, it's like some things he put out, and then if George was alive, he'd be totally pissed if he didn't like it, or Prince would be upset, or, you know, so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If they do, I hope it's done with class and, you know, good production. Right. David I guess still David, have a hand in that. David That's what they say. Um, you know, I, I mean, David, I, um, Dave Austin. What was it like to work with David? <clears throat> David used to come and sleep on my floor with me, <laughs> made a film, and hang out when he was a kid. We all, we all, all of us, that we were, we had so much fun. Um, and I haven't really, I talked to David, I talked to David um, a couple of times, but now that he's got that responsibility, I really, because there's so many things that, you know, I'm just like, okay, man, you you know where I'm at, so we'll we'll talk. Um, and I guess he's handling that, yeah. So, and hopefully, um, the family is happy with all that. Like I said, I haven't talked to them. You know, when you get in involved in family things, it's sort of just let them, you know, you know. Yeah. Any more questions? What happened to your black and white Dalmatian coat? <laughs> <laughs> you saw that, did you? Now that, that was a, that was a wild night. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if it's like in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or something. Mm -hmm. Should have been. You know, I'm trying to think. That was, was what, um, I don't know where that coat's at. Oh, it's probably the storage unit in London. Because I still have storage somewhere. Yeah, that was all. Uh, okay, I think we're gonna let Dion take a little break, and um, we're gonna give away some tour prizes. That's what I'm working on, and some great songs. And um, I think that I'm going to do something for George. Uh, um, no? Yes. Oh, okay, we won't talk about that. Oh, I'm not allowed to talk. Oh, we're all finding out in due time. <laughs> Hey, that's right, bring it. <laughs> you can't say that! <laughs> you mentioned there were other instruments in your house growing up, saxophone, but not, were they yours? Who they belong to? Well, if I didn't have brothers and sisters, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I played sax in school. I play about six or seven instruments. Oh, so people wow. just know me from playing bass. But, um, I play keyboards, a lot of things. totally different. Um, um, it turned English um, for years. Um, and I only came back because my, I wanted to see my parents before they died. Because you know, one day I woke up and went, you're not from here. You know, but I've been there with George and Elton and everybody. And you know, you, you forget you're having so much fun. And I thought, no, your parents are getting old. You've been over here for like 20 years. You need to come home and see your parents. So I finally went back to see them. Um, but England for me is home in a way because, I mean, for instance, I haven't been to London besides the last time um, with Ross. Is it 20 or 30 years? As soon as I got into a cab, the guy said, Dion, this is from where? Man, I love you, missed you, how you doing? Oh, my gosh. Oh, Jesus. You know, 30 years. And wherever I go, 
they all knew me. So um, from where? So um, I, 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 I like it. I like it too. But I like I like it. I like the world. I like traveling. I just love people. Okay. Any more questions? Well, we arranged the London weather. Yeah. I said that. As soon as we got, into, we got off the plane, I'm like, oh, it's like London. I feel at home. It's cool. We did that for you. Yeah, that's okay. It's been 99.9 degrees here, and then all of a sudden, you know, hurricane, whatever, her flow came through. Wow. It's been raining nonstop. Wow. It is. But I'm looking forward to the snow. I love snow, too. I like the snow. So. Well, if it was up to me, I would leave move to a more climate, but my husband refuses to move because he says it doesn't snow everywhere. It, well, it, it's strange to not see snow. It is. I'm known for Christmas. I mean, you know, you don't like snow. <laughs> well, I, well, me too. Um, did, do you feel like you can, can, can you speak to what the dynamic between you and Jordan, and maybe the girls too, ladies were, was about teaching each other about music and collaborating. Was there anything that you feel like? You no, it happened, no, uh, when you mean each other? Yeah, like how did, did George influence you musically, you and him? And, and yeah, I said, again, some people are just, some things are just magic. You know, we sat down, we met in the chair. Here's this guy on the couch. We looked at each other. I said, okay, he said, okay. Next thing I know, we write songs and just play. It just happened like that. No, there's no, as we got going, we sat down, we do stuff. He would hear stuff. He would say, I'm hearing this. I go, cool, that sounds good. And I go, and I play something, so I like that. And I do something else, and he go, I don't like that. And then I, and he do something, and I go, I don't like that. <laughs> and so, you know, it was, um, you know, we, we had a very special way of working together. And we, we did a lot of work together without other people being around. So we would do that first sometimes, and then other times we would um, be with everybody. You know, but um, it just it just worked. It just worked. It was no real hard effort. Um, and I never took the attitude of, well, I'm the oldest and I've been playing longer, so let me show you this. You know, it was never any of that. Um, um, we just seem to understand each other and listen and respect each other. And um, we did some good stuff together, you know? When was the last time you saw George? Um, I saw George. I spoke with him not, not long before Christmas. But I didn't, I haven't, I didn't see him for a while. I saw, I saw um, another funny story. Another funny story. We, he was playing the form and I liked and it was the first, I think it was the first time I wasn't actually playing the gig. But I know, I, I went to the show. So he's sitting there singing. And the security goes, oh, Dion, so I'm walking through the forum. And I just walk right up to him. And he's singing, I'm just standing there. Like, and he goes, oh, it's Dion. You know? And um, that, was, that was a fun experience to see him, see him perform. And it's nice to actually see him without being on stage because you actually get a chance to look from another view, because I was always up there, it's hard to, but when you actually go and see it, it was, um, it's really nice. Oh, yeah. and the show was good, I enjoyed it, yeah. What, what was it like to play with Shirley again, when you play with Oh, that's good. that was great, that was great, and... that was great. That was a lot of fun, a lot of fun, a lot of fun, yeah. yeah. Any more questions? Yes, <laughs> tell me about the shuttlecocks, whose idea was that? Oh my God, I was just thinking yeah. about that. <laughs> when he was doing the brain game. Well, I was trying for Frisbee. Yeah, there were Frisbees, actually. There were Frisbees. We had whammo Frisbees. Yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. We had we did. shorts. Yeah, no, no. You yeah. can't get us some shorts. No, they get strange. No, no. Yeah, you know it was Andrews. You know, it had to be Andrews. It had to be Andrews. It had to be Andrews. Yeah. But you're a pro. No, I'm talking, she's talking about something else. Sorry. Oh, yeah. She didn't, Sorry. Did, you, did, did you know that? I had a shuttlecock. Oh. Shuttlecock. 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 And shorts. And shorts. And through the crowd. Did you see that? Uh, uh, I did. Between interviews and George interviews, yeah. I certainly wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Birdie. But 
Oh, 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 oh. No, no. Yeah. You know, it's just getting the record deal, and can you come over and write some songs with him and help sing and play some bass? And I said, sure. So I, you know, I went over, and it was like magic. We um, met for the first time, and that was it. We were together for a long, long time. Um, it's, it's so weird to, um, to think about when you, when you hear these songs on the radio or like Wake Me Up Before You Go and so many things to think about. By the way, Wake Me Up Before You Go Go was recorded the same day Marvin Gaye died. Oh, wow. So they called me from America and said Marvin died. Now, I, I just, I did sexual healing with Marvin, and I, he said, Dion, can you come to America? And I said, no, I'm, gonna, I'm hanging out with this band called Wham. And, 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 you know, I'm hanging out with George, and we're going to have a good time, you know. So he went to America, and um, but they called me. So when they told me that, we were, I was personally playing the song a different way, um, Wake Me Up. But when they told me Marvin had just died, I thought that, you know what? I'm gonna swing this like we used to play in the Motown days, right? And that's why right. it's that kind of beat, that rhythm to it. You know, so, so that's a little history for you. Um, what else? Um, it was such an honor working with George. So much fun. We had a great time. Um, traveled the world, of course, you know that. Um, many, many memories. Many um, crazy memories. China was. Um, a good memory for us um, playing um, football. And where's my. Am I tearing up? Well, you, you gotta have real emotion, right? Right. Yeah. All right. So, anyway, um, we, um, we used to always act crazy. And I remember in China, um, us playing football with the, uh, with the Chinese guys, Andrew played football a lot, you know. You know, he's good, he was pretty good. Not as good as Ross Stewart, but I mean, <laughs> yes. no, he ripped his bag. <laughs> and I don't play, so I just watch. <laughs> okay, you guys go, yeah, yeah, right on. <laughs> but um, um, we had a good time in China. It was um, very interesting in um, communist China. So when we played, they didn't know how to dance or act. And so when they did, they saw some of the, some of the um, kids got um, put in prison for oh, dancing. Because it's communist, no dancing in communist China. But they asked us how, um, how, do they, how do we act in the Western world? So we told them, yeah, we scream and act crazy and go bananas and go wild. And, you know, but um, you know, it, was, it was very strange seeing that. They put all the kids at the back and they put all the government in the front. And it was so quiet like this, you could hear, wake me up before you go, just like this. Wake me up. We were playing pop, but it was just so quiet. And the guys in the front were just. <laughs> I'm like, oh wow, I can't get, any, can't get anything out of this car. <laughs> and um, so um, that was fun. Um, I, was, I was telling my friend the other day, um, some of the, I was just thinking about the sun and some of the sunsets. I just happened to be with George to see um, some of the um, beautiful, you know, like when we were in South America, and you would see on the boats and things, you would see the sunset, and I thought, that's really beautiful, you know? I think about it now. More tears? Okay. We have to get that's all right. That's okay. okay. But at least you know it's real. Right. Um, so, okay. No more tears. <laughs> you promise? Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm watching you already. <laughs> so, um, I think some of the, the best memories, um, when you see someone from a, a, young, a young age, um, and they are developing their skills, and um, for me, it's great to be a part of that. So, you know, you, you have um, what, we, what we call artist development, right? And with George, he knew, uh, kind of what he wanted, he had it in his head. He didn't quite know how to get it. You know, I guess that's why I was sick and other people, you know, and um, you know, he would, he would just hum stuff. So he said, okay, yeah, this and that, I go, yeah, this and that, and then, you know, we add some more to it. Um, 
him and Andrew were dear careless whispers when they were, I think, 15 years old. I think in a, um, a group they had, I, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Um, executive. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know about this? <laughs> but it didn't sound like that, like it does now. You know, when we came in, 